Sandman Stories presents Why Dogs Sniff, the story of the dog's dinner party. From the islands of magic, legends, folk, and fairy tales from the Azores. Retold by Elsie Spicer Eels. This is a story coming from the Azores. It's about some dogs who go to a party. And if you're ever wondering why dogs sniff each other, this is the reason why. Okay, let's begin. Why Dogs Sniff, the story of the dog's dinner party. Once upon a time, the dogs gave a dinner party. All the dogs were invited, and all the dogs accepted the invitation. There were big dogs and little dogs and middle-sized dogs. There were black dogs and white dogs and brown dogs and gray dogs and yellow dogs and spotted dogs. There were dogs with long tails, and dogs with short tails, and dogs with no tails at all. There were dogs with little sharp pointed ears, and dogs with big, flat, drooping ears. There were dogs with long, slender noses, and dogs with short, fat, turned up noses. All these dogs came to the party. Now the dinner was a most elaborate affair. Everything had been arranged with the utmost care. All the good things to eat, were spread out upon the rocks by the sea. A gay, sparkling little brook brought water to drink. The sun was shining brightly, and a soft, gentle little breeze was blowing. Everything seemed absolutely perfect. But there was a cross, fussy old dog who came to the party. She was a yellow dog, they say. Nothing ever suited her. Whenever she went to a party, she always found fault with something. Sometimes there was too little to eat, and sometimes there was too much. Sometimes the hot things were not hot enough, and sometimes the cold things were not cold enough. Sometimes the hot things were so hot they burned her mouth, and the cold things so cold that they gave her indigestion. There was always something wrong. At this party, however, there was not too much to eat, and there was not too little to eat. The hot things were all just hot enough, and the cold things were all just cold enough. Everything seemed to be exactly as it should be. How good everything tastes, remarked the big black dog between polite mouthfuls. Everything is seasoned exactly right, added the black and white spotted dog between mouthfuls, which were entirely too large to be polite. That was an unfortunate remark. The cross, fussy yellow dog heard it. She noticed immediately that the big juicy bone she was eating had not been seasoned with pepper. Will somebody please pass the pepper, she asked. All the black dogs and white dogs and brown dogs and yellow dogs and gray dogs and spotted dogs fell over each other trying to find the pepper to pass. There was not a single bit of pepper at that dinner party. I can't eat a mouthful until I have some pepper, whined the yellow dog. I'll go into the city and get some pepper, said one of the dogs. Nobody ever knew which dog it was. The dog who went into the city to get the pepper never came back. Nobody ever knew what became of him. Whenever two dogs meet, they always sniff at each other. If one of them should happen to be the dog who went into the city to get the pepper, he would surely smell of pepper. The end. Sandman Stories presents Simon, the Friend of Snakes From the book The Golden Maiden And Other Folk Tales and Fairy Tales Told in Armenia By A.G. Seklemien This is a story of a young shepherd that saves a royal snake and is rewarded but cursed at the same time with the burden of his secret. How will he handle being asked about his secret? Let's find out. Okay, let's begin. Simon, the Friend of Snakes The King of Snakes lives in the ruins of a big tower between Nineveh and Babylon and rules all the snake tribe on both land and sea. Once the king's son who was the viceroy of the province of Diyarbakir, wrote a letter to his royal father as follows. Long live the king, 
may heaven bestow upon you life everlasting. Amen. Be it known to you that your daughter-in-law and grandchildren were sick last summer, and the doctors advised that they must have a change of climate, and must go to Mount Ararat and bathe in its pure streams, and eat its fragrant flowers, and this will immediately heal them. Consequently, I sent her and the children with their attendants to Mount Ararat. I also wrote letters to the provincial viceroys and princes to assist the princess and her train during the sojourn in that district. But the prince of Adarbadagan, after receiving my letter, instead of giving help to the traveling princess, collected his troops and assaulted her in her train. The attendants of the princess met them bravely, and there, at the foot of Mount Ararat, occurred a bloody battle which would doubtless have resulted in the total defeat of the princess's train on account of the superior numbers of the enemy if a human being, Simon the shepherd, who was tending his flock in a neighboring field, had not come to the assistance of our fatigued combatants. He took his great club and, entering the ranks of the warriors, beat and killed and pursued the assaulting brigands of the prince of Adarbagan and saved the life of your daughter-in-law, who thus came safely through this perilous journey. You see, my liege, that there is good even among men. I will punish the vile prince of Adarbagan for his wicked conduct, but it remains for you to reward the goodness of this noble human being, as you deem best, and oblige your affectionate son. The king of snakes, receiving this letter, took with him a vast quantity of gold and jewels and went to his palace in a ruined castle between Aleppo and Diyarbakir. He posted his attendants on the highways to keep watch and inform him when Shepherd Simon should pass. The shepherd was employed by the dealers in livestock, who did business with Damascus and Aleppo, and was now on his way to Aleppo. As soon as he approached the palace of the Snake King, the watchers informed their sovereign, and in the twinkling of an eye, the whole army of snakes stood near the highway and began to conjure. Simon the shepherd felt a strange dizziness. The heavens above and the earth below seemed to change. He stood there bewitched while his companions drove away. Presently he opened his eyes, and lo, he was surrounded by innumerable snakes of all sizes and colors. Upon a golden throne was sitting a snake, as thick as the body of an elephant, and upon his head there was a crown of costly jewels and diamonds. One of the snakes read a paper praising the goodness of the shepherd, his natural fondness for the snake tribe, and his gallant defense of the weak and wronged. Now, noble human being, said the king, here is gold for you, precious jewels and diamonds. Take as much as you like, and in addition to these, if you have a desire in your heart, tell it to me, and I will cause it to be satisfied. Simon, after filling his shepherd's bag and his pockets with gold and jewels, said, I wish to understand the language of all animals, reptiles, and birds. Let it be so, said the king, but the day on which you shall tell anything of what you have seen or heard, you shall die. The spell was removed, the snakes vanished, and Simon the shepherd returned to his home near the foot of Mount Ararat. On the way he heard the animals talking, and lo! They knew all the secrets of men and foretold events that would happen. Sometimes he laughed at what he heard, and sometimes he was terrified so that his hair stood erect upon his head. He entered his native village, and lo, all the dogs, cats, chickens, and even the long-legged storks were hallooing to one another, saying, Simon the shepherd has come. His bag and pockets are full of gold and jewels. Simon came to his house and put his treasure before his wife who, being a very curious woman, instantly asked him where and how he obtained so much wealth. Enjoy it, but never ask, answered Simon. Simon heard his dog and chickens talking in regards to the secrets of his house. Sometimes he laughed, and sometimes he was angry. His wife, noticing Simon's strange conduct towards the animals, asked the reason. He refused to tell, but she begged and importuned him, weeping all the time. Finally, he could resist her entreaties no longer, and promised to tell her everything on the following day. That evening, he heard the dog talking to the cock, which was leading the chickens to roost, chuckling and gurgling. "'Tell me, Master Rooster,' said the dog, "'what is the use of your chuckling and gurgling? Since our master has promised his wife tomorrow to tell her everything, he will die. People will come and kill you. 
shoot me, and plunder and ruin everything which belongs to our master. Ah, the sooner it is ruined, the better, answered the rooster contemptuously. I have a family of forty wives who are all obedient to me. If our master was as wise as he is rich, he would not pay attention to the vain inquisitiveness of his wife. He himself would not die, and no harm would befall us or his house. But now he deserves death. Hearing this, Simon was advised. He seized his great club and stood before his wife, saying, Wife, you must stop trying to compel me to tell you the secret. Be content with which you have, else by heaven I will beat you to death. The woman, seeing the club brandished over her head, put an end to her inquiries, and thereafter lived a happy life. The end. Oh, I, I thought this was an interesting story, but the misogyny at the end, not so big a fan of it. Uh, the wife should be obedient is pretty squeaky to me. Also, if my wife came home with a bunch of money in her pockets and was able to talk to the animals, I'd be pretty curious as to what was going on too. So I definitely understand the wife's inquisitiveness. This week's shout out goes to my listeners in Da Nang, Vietnam. You are exactly half of my listeners in Vietnam. Thank you for listening, and good night.